three garden tours um, so this will be the third year of um, if I can keep it up of doing a monthly garden tour I usually do it around the beginning of each month um, takes me a, another week or so to actually get it um, online so we've had some pretty foul weather the last few days it was just too windy and wet to actually do any recording um, but I can tell you now the garden is not looking pretty um, very muddy very wet so um but that's all part of it um it's the reality um, and i'm pretty muddy too so i spend most of uh the next couple of months looking like this um usually with a muddy coat on as well but actually the sun's come out today so it's pretty beautiful i feel like i'm glowing actually um anyway here we go um each each month I will follow the same kind of route through the garden so it gives it you and me a bit of an idea about how things are progressing or not as the case may be. So here we go. So this is just a scruffy bit of, of a patch underneath our lovely apple tree which is fantastic. It's just outside our kitchen window um, and it's fantastic for the birds. They just love perching in the tree. Um, oh, I think one just flew off then. It must have been on the, on the nuts or on the seeds. So um, it's fab for that um, and I just put in all my le leftovers. Um, as you can see there's some ammy left over here which hopefully has self-seeded um, and I'm kind of just letting things do their own thing in here. But it's really useful to have a little patch like this. In fact on closer inspection these little seedlings down here, they are all honesty seedlings. So the honesty is just over there and it has self seeded. And now that they're big enough, I can recognize, I kind of have this sort of a heart shaped leaf. So that's why I'm pretty sure that they are honesty. I forgot to mention that it's the 6th of January today. Lovely sunny afternoon, just had my lunch. I've now probably got couple of hours of daylight left. Um, so the apple mint is due to be cut back. I won't rush at it, um, leave it for the overwintering insects, but probably early February I'll get, get going at this. I might have a go at it before. We had a really hard frost for a few days, um, sort of first or second week of December. So a few things have um, succumbed, but you know, quite a lot of things have made it through. So these are the, is the honesty, which one or two plants look like they've been hit, but actually they don't think they've completely died. Um, so I've lost one or two, but you know, we got down to about minus nine. So it just goes to show. Not a lot else down here. Oh, I did move the agapanthus, which I hadn't done um, last month, but I managed to get it in the garage before the temperatures really dropped. Not sure if there's any sign of life on my narcissi plantings. It is pretty early, but I have seen other places where they're coming up, so nothing, nothing showing here, which I'm kind of not surprised about. Um, and this is usually pretty nice in the spring. I have a few bulbs of things coming up. Apart from that, this border is nothing very special. So I'm expanding a few beds. Um, so there's a lot of uh, carpet and cardboard and everything down. Um, this will be more for kind of long term, not necessarily for the cutting patch. Okay, so how are the how are the annuals doing? Okay. So again, I did manage to get um, the Enviromesh on some of these plantings, which was good. Um, but again, you know, it's just showing you that hardy annuals, they are pretty hardy. So here we've got some cornflower 
and these have all had minus nines on them. We've got some clary in there, clary sage. Another bed of cornflower, some corn cockle, um, which are perking up a little bit. They did look a bit sorry for themselves, but I've got enough in there, I think. So these beds, hmm, the Facelia didn't, wasn't particularly happy. We'll see what happens to that, whether that manage, manages to pop up or whether that's had it. This had some direct sown nigella in, which was not thinned out. So somewhere in there, there is some nigella. Um, and I need to weed and cover this bed here. And yeah, so I've got my tarpaulins at the ready to cut up to size this time I think and put over some of these beds so as soon as I finish filming I shall be doing that and hopefully get a few beds done before the end of the day. The sweet pea arch has really stood up well this year. It is a bit brittle because of the UV but actually it's done um, it's easily going to last this summer. Probably need to renew it next year and I think I'm gonna, just going to put maybe another section of willow up here another bit of weaving just to give it a bit of strength. Um, I've managed to cut back the Amobium alatum. That really did get hit with the frost, not surprisingly, because it was still looking, it was still flowering actually until December. Um, let's have a look around here. I am going to dig up one or two of the Amobium alatum because they can over winter so I'm not sure we'll have a I'll, I'll just have to take my take a chance but the Rudbeckia um, pretty sure that's Sahara I think I will pop that in a pot as well rather than leaving it out and then I will plant it back um, that was a survivor from last uh, the summer before last actually overwintered last year okay let's have a look at the Diocus. Oh, that's looking pretty good in there. And the Diocus is looking good. That is a biennial stroke hardy annual. I'm still not quite sure how to treat it really. Um, these two beds have been cleared. We had zinnias and then we had cosmos latterly and these two. They just need a quick weed over of the worst weeds. There's a couple of docks in there, then I'm going to get those covered. There's a tarpaulin at the ready. Okay, not a lot going on on this side. Um, one, two, three, there's four beds um, and only one had anything in it. But I think it might. It was the Ami, which did look amazing, but I am pretty sure I've lost most of it. There's a couple of plants. I'm having a quick look. There does not look like there's much in the way of survivors, which is a bit of a blow, to be perfectly honest. I've got a couple down here, actually, but... Um, hmm. Not quite sure what I'm going to do about that because it's always useful to have some early ammy. Um, okay, let's scan around. Okay, let's have a look down in the perennials area, sort of. Um, okay, so this is my alliums bed, um, and it also has kind of an edge of greater quaking grass, which I have to really keep on top of and actually it got to the stage I wasn't sure what was quaking grass and what was alliums popping up um anyway and also I noticed something has been having a nice go at digging up some of the bulbs I'm not sure if that is pheasants I suspect it probably is um I've just brought the netting down to try and dissuade them from coming in but yeah, you can see they've been having a right old go. It might be squirrels. I'm not quite sure what it is. I still haven't cut back these annuals. They need 
need that needs to be done oh i need to cut back the raspberries as well uh, these these are autumn fruiting raspberries and so now is the time to get those cut back down to ground level and nothing in this bed just needs to be covered everything's rather late um cosmos still needs to be taken out okay so i haven't literally haven't done anything down here and i'm just going to leave it until february so it's pretty much perennials but there are some annuals in here so this is the last bee which i always leave to seed i've got lots of seedlings of something down here I suspect that might be Larkspur or it might be Nigella. I'm not exactly sure. It's difficult to tell the difference at this stage. And I know I had both around here in this area. Um, Astrantia, Echinacea, Gypsophila Covent Garden, Achillea the Pearl. Everything's looking very structural. It's a nice way of putting it, isn't it? And then on the other side, We've got Achillea on this side, Verbena bonariensis, some uh, Achillea, the pearl again, oh, a little bit of sea lavender, um, Catenanch, Polymonium, really didn't like the dry weather. Um, so, but I did manage to save a couple of plants which are gonna get planted back out again. Sedum, Veronica, and that's about it down here. Let's have a look at the little greenhouse. Okay, so last month the pelagonia was still looking green and about three feet tall. We had the awful frost and I don't think any has survived. Um, luckily, I think I've got a stem or two that um, can be propagated inside. So I haven't done so, but pretty sure that I might have saved a little bit. Um, and what have we got here? We've got some... Gypsophila, Cobber Garden on the bottom, uh, Daucus, some cheapo plants that I bought in the winter. I think that's hydrangea actually, whether they survived, I do not know. Um, this was, uh, oh, that was Ami. Mm. Didn't like the frost. Here we've got some quaking grass that I've uh, potted up for my Cetavars group. And then there's some more perennials, again, those cheap perennials, which were in the sale. Um, I have completely ignored my ranunculus, which is not good because they don't really like dry, being dried out. Um, it still feels, they actually feel okay. But um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm actually going to plant those out soon. Oh dear, they don't look very happy, some of them at all. Right. Oh, well, see what happens. So the sweet peas are still alive. Um, they probably would be better off in a cold frame, but anyway, they are still alive. I've got a handful of so there. Okay, let's have a quick look in the potting shed. It is not pretty. Um, it's stuffed full of things, including a few dahlia, which I dug up um, to uh, propagate so this is downham royal actually this was in my greenhouse and uh so i just recently dug that this up and um, anyway so i've just popped the tubers into some sawdust and keep our fingers crossed basically and i've got some a few others in there as well as a rule i leave most of my dahlias in um apart from that it is absolutely just needs a real good sort out the potting shed i'm ashamed to show you this So I was busy in the autumn um, dividing some perennials that um, I had to clear because we did a bit of um, landscaping outside. So yeah, there's a lot of things, there's obviously sedum and a lot of these I'm hoping to be able to give away to my cedar vase group. There's a few leftover sweet william, foxgloves, all sorts, uh, cornflower. I really need to get some of these things planted. They'd be much safer in the ground. And as for my army, which are out of the top of this cold frame, 
I uh, think they've had it. I think they've had it. They really didn't like the frost. So minus, ten, minus nine was just a bit too much for them. Okay, let's have a look inside the greenhouse, the big greenhouse. Well, I managed to get some clearing done. In fact, most of the beds have been cleared. Um, yeah, I think I've got some bulbs in here. I've saved some of my <laughs> compost tea. Um, and yeah, some more bulbs over there. And then I have potted on most of these things. Honestly, I neglect most of this lot. So uh, snapdragons, they do look a lot better now that they've been potted on, I have to say. These aren't looking great, are they? I think they're, I think they're a, bit, a bit too dry. More snapdragons. Um, uh, Nigella, cyanoglossum, these could do with potting on actually, I think, or watering or something. Okay, so the Mlopi didn't uh, like the cold either, so I've lost quite a lot of those. I cut some of them right back just to see what would happen. Um, there's a few, um, oh, sign and There's a few corn cockle here, some more nigella. Oh, I didn't show you my sweet peas in the other greenhouse. Uh, the there were these were spare clary sage, and I might have just about saved them. Uh, so lark spare, I potted on. Ah, these look better. So this is clary sage. I potted those on as well. They have benefited actually. They've really enjoyed having a being potted on. The other thing I need to do is clean the greenhouse. That will make a real difference. It's much easier to do these things regularly or like annually rather than leaving it for five years and then it being a heck of a job. Okay, so I have managed to, just before Christmas, I did finally manage to get the dahlias cleared, or actually it might've been after Christmas. Um, so yeah, the two dahlia beds, and I've done a separate video on this, they have been cut back and um, just covered over. I didn't get access to any manure this year. And then the biennials, we've got Sweet William on either side here. And we have got Hesperus and we've got Digitalis foxglove and some more foxglove and finally the, another little patch which hasn't been tended to sadly well one of it has but yeah a bit of clearing to, to, to be done and some covering up but now the weather's improved maybe I can get get at doing that Apple pruning, apple tree pruning, that's another job that we do at this time of year too. So that is it for the January 2023 garden tour. Um, and I look forward to you following for the next uh, 11 sessions, I guess, um, and see how the garden changes this year compared to last year. Bye.